I appreciate any help you give me, anything you do to reinforce me. I thank you for giving me a ride to church, but I'm a grown man and I want my own car. I, you got to get to the point that you don't want somebody else's stuff and you're ready to go to the next level. You are not want somebody else's husband. You are not want somebody else's wife. Give me my stuff. This is the potter's touch. I've been busy running to and fro, getting ready for Megafest. Busy, 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 running, running, running. But I had to stop and share this word with you. Our series is called Favor Ain't Fair, and you're walking in divine favor. I know you are. I hear from you. I get your letters, and I see you on Twitter, and I see you on Facebook, and I know that God is doing some things in your life that are totally unexplainable. That's why the haters hate you like they do, because you're walking in supernatural favor. I'm going to explain it for you in just a minute, because favor, it ain't fair. God gives you provisions for purpose. Everything you've got, your talent, your singing, your speaking, your ability, your charisma, your articulation, your IQ, your financial dexterity, it makes no difference what it is. God gave you those favors for his divine purpose. So the statement reads in the Bible, drop some handfuls on purpose. If you know your purpose, God said, I'll leave stuff just laying around for you. If you know it's not for you, I, I, I just, I'll just, just leave some handfuls on your purpose. If you know your purpose, if you don't allow people to manipulate you and control you and, and, and have them move you into their agenda, if you know who you are and stand your ground and stay on your purpose, your provision is in your purpose. When you find your purpose, you'll find your provision. Oh, uh, do you hear? You, your provision is in your purpose. When you find your purpose, you'll find your provision. And he dropped it. And, and so what happens to you is you get to this stage where God just starts leaving you blessings. And the first reaction you have, you want to tell people. Child, you will not believe. <laughs> have you ever called somebody and you said, you said, how you doing? What you doing? What's going on? You didn't really want them to answer. You want them to hurry up so you could tell them you would not believe what just happened to me. I was just, I, I was, I'm telling you, I just stopped by the grocery store, didn't even know. I was over there by the chicken wings. I was getting ready to pick me up some chicken wings because I had to rush back home. Ran into the president of Texaco there getting some chicken wings. If I hadn't gone to get the chicken wings, I never would have met him. Found out there's a position right over there. Now that they're phasing out my job, had they not phased out my job, had I not gone to get the chicken wings, they had not he gone to get the chicken wings, we never would have had this conversation. And without having to go through all the red tape and all the technology, you would never believe how God just opened up. Oh, 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 oh. God just. You find yourself in a situation where it's difficult to find anybody who understands the level of favor that God, and, and it is a level, it is a level, it is. See, all, all of these steps, all of these steps are the same size, but they're on different levels. See, there's, there's different levels of blessings. The, the, the pauper who was homeless found a shelter and he says, my God is the provider. The guy standing beside him just bought a $2.5 million home. And he says, my God is the provider. And both of them are thankful and both of them are right and both of them receive provisions, but it's just different levels. <laughs> there are different levels of joy, different levels of peace different levels of victory, different levels of anointing. Everybody has an anointing, but it's not on the same level. Every minister has a ministry, but it's not on the same level. Every teacher can teach, but it's... And so periodically, God wants to take you from faith to faith, 
from glory to glory. He wants to take you to the next level. And this is where the church gets stuck because we get stuck on one level of blessings as if God were finished. Now I'm in the tough part of this sermon. Excuse me. This is the tough part. Because once you've had some handfuls dropped on purpose, you get hooked on the handfuls. And if you're not careful, you'll become satisfied and complacent to remain on that level of living when all the while God has some more... And inevitably, people get frustrated in life because what they do is they fool around and get stuck on the steps and fail to move into the next level of blessings. Now, I'm going to give an illustration, a biblical illustration, then I'm going to give you an application, and then I'm going to holler and I'm going to get out of here. illustration is Israel in the wilderness God does everything for them they say we're thirsty he makes water come out of the rock we're hot he becomes a cloud above them by day at night they say we're in the desert it's cold he becomes a pillar of fire by night they say we want some bread he becomes manna falling from heaven they say we sick of bread we want some meat he sends some quail come on give them pheasant on the glass Everything comes easy, like the handfuls on purpose. It is, in essence, welfare. Let me show you why welfare doesn't work. Welfare is meant to be a temporary blessing for a particular predicament so that you can get the fortitude to rise to the next step. And if you stay on that level too long, it frustrates your development because, because it is just enough. And you got it because you didn't have not enough. But where God is trying to take you is to more than enough. And if you get stuck at just enough, you'll never get more than enough. And if you never get more than enough, you'll never become what God has for you to be. Mm. And what happens to most people is that they become satisfied. We're still complacent, complacent to live off of what somebody else dropped. I thank God for the droppings, but I didn't go through everything I went through just to wait on you to drop me something. I appreciate any help you give me, anything you do to reinforce me. I thank you for giving me a ride to church, but I'm a grown man and I want my own car. I, you got to get to the point that you don't want somebody else's stuff and you're ready to go to the next level. You are not want somebody else's husband. You are not want somebody else's wife. Give me my stuff. I wish I had a witness up in here. And so what happens is you got to get to the point that you're ready to go to the next level. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to go to the next level. You, you, you might not be able to handle this, but I'm, I'm going to the next level. Uh, I, I know you want me to stay gleaning behind you so that we can become codependent so that you can feel good about yourself because you need to be needed but I'm getting ready to go to the next level
Now, now, let me show you how this is applicable to the text. Ruth is gleaning behind the reapers in a field that God meant for her to own. And if you read the book of Ruth from cover to cover, she ends up owning the field that she was working in. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I don't know why you had to come to church this morning, but I came to tell you that where you're working now, you're going to own tomorrow. God! Somebody's getting ready to go to another level. Touch your neighbor and say, excuse me. I got to go to the next level. Can you imagine how this must have tripped these women out? Because here these women were leaving some for a poor old, poor old roof. Poor old broke down roof. I guess we'll leave some for her with her broke self and a no dressing self and she can't even get her hair done and dresses on sideways. I guess we'll help her sister out. And, and, and by the time we get to the fourth chapter, the one who was behind them had switched around and was in front of them. You don't know how the story is going to end up. God has a way. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. One of the first things God's going to let you see is that favor ain't fair. When people first start helping you, they want to see why God favored you. So they want to get close to you so they can see if there's something special about you. Then when they find out there's nothing special about you, they get mad. But they don't understand that favor ain't fair. It's just that God sovereignly chooses to bless you. And anytime you bless whoever God is blessing, the blessing boomerangs back. What arose in America as the biggest event of its kind is back. And now the stage is set. You have never seen a meeting like this. Gather again at Megafest 2013. We're taking over Dallas. Oh, you're going to catch abundance. You're going to catch God's blessing. Encouraging women. Peacemaker is somebody who declares war on anything that disturbs their peace. There is a principle that will cause a in your situation. If he can deliver me, he can deliver you. Equipping men. We have more fear in running out Good. than we do faith in running over. Everywhere my foot treads. To claim dominion over it and take it back for the kingdom. This is going to be big. Elevated to walk in that destination. Meet us in Dallas, Texas, August 29th through 31st. Register at mega-fest.com or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. We do it big in Texas. I'll give you my little testimony. I close this. We were looking for a house. It was the first house we were to own. We had rented a few houses and assumed a house. We never owned a house, and I didn't own a house because at first my credit was so bad. I like to tell the truth. People call things that never. Anyway, so I started saving money so that when God blessed me, we'd get a house. Every time we tried to get a house, something went wrong. So I went back to saving more money, tried again, something went wrong. Every time I kept looking for a house, I kept losing the deal. I didn't realize then that God was closing doors because I was aiming too low. I was aiming low because I knew what it was to have nothing and I'd have been glad to have anything but God wasn't glad for me to have just anything it is the father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom 
And so everything that I would have been satisfied with that was less than what he wanted me to have, he closed the door. So, <laughs> I said that for those of you who can't figure out why that door just closed. The reason that door on the thing that you was trying to get just closed is because you're aiming too low. If you would set your sights up where the Word of God says you're going to live, that's when God is going. And so, let me tell you what it is. So, so Ruthie, the realtor, back up there in West Virginia, she's a realtor, she said, well, Mr. Jake, she says, uh, there is another house, I'll just drive you over there and let you take a look at it and see what you think about that house. That's the way she talks, you know. So I said, all right. So she drove me over there. We drove up through a, a little underground railroad or something and, and came up on the other side and around. And we came around the corner and there was this And, and I, you know how you don't want to let the person know that this is ridiculous because you know even if I couldn't pay for it there was no need in embarrassing myself so I tried to sit there and be cool I said mm. no for sale sign on the lot because you know those kind of houses you don't have to do that and there was no for sale sign out there and she knocked on the door and uh, and the lady opened up the door you know she came to the door and uh, opened up the door and we came in and they proceeded to show me the house halfway through the house I looked up they didn't even hear me I looked up in the middle of the hallway of the house I said God I can have it. <laughs> See, it was hard for me to understand that all of this other stuff that I was snatching for, the reason it didn't work is that he had something better. Sometimes things don't work out because God has something better. And if you will allow him to shut the door on what he doesn't want, then he can open the door on what he does want. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but touch a neighbor and tell him God's got something better. the thing. I'm not trying to finish because I figured out at 8 o'clock I couldn't finish this. In between the second chapter where she's gleaning behind the reapers and the fourth chapter where she ends moving from stewardship into ownership, she encounters the ministry of Naomi, an older woman who becomes a mentor and a coach to her. You need a coach. If you ever get in the bodybuilding and you're in the gym and you're working out and all of a sudden you plateau, you need a trainer. Who, they don't have to lift the weight. You just need somebody to get in your and say, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give me five more. Come on. Come on. You got it in you. Come on. Come on. You got it. Come on. Come on, reach out. Come on, come on, it's in it. Come on, reach for it, reach. Without a coach, you'll plateau on this level when you really have the potential to come up to that level. And what, what Naomi did for Ruth was teach her how to make it happen 
Whatever God did in Ruth was so strong that Naomi, who was an old, wrinkled up mother-in-law who was getting ready to die, depressed, came on back and Naomi got a new lease on life trying to help Ruth fulfill her dream. I want to say something to older women and older men and not just older in age but more seasoned in experience because some people get older but they don't get wiser. <laughs> Listen to this, just because your purpose changes and you're no longer needed to serve in the capacity that you once did doesn't mean that God doesn't have a new assignment for you. Naomi was no longer required to be a wife or a mother. She was now called to be a mentor. And if you don't make that transition, you'll go through frustration. They'll think it's menopause, but it's a purpose pause. <laughs> Naomi started just wanting to bless Ruth to see her reach her goal. And, and what happens, anytime you help somebody that God has favored, now understand, when you start helping them, one of the first things God's gonna let you see is that favor ain't fair. When people first start helping you, they wanna see why God favored you. So they wanna get close to you so they can see if there's something special about you. Then when they find out there's nothing special about you, they get mad. But they don't understand that favor ain't fair. It's just that God sovereignly chooses to bless you. And anytime you bless whoever God is blessing, the blessing boomerangs back. <laughs> Naomi didn't even know that she was being healed while she was helping Ruth. She was being redirected while she was helping Ruth. And the Bible says that when Ruth, see Ruth, Ruth married Boaz and, 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 and begat Obed and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David, and out of David came Jesus. Which basically means Jesus great, 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 grandmama came out the projects. That's basically what that means. Ruth come from the hood. <laughs> uh, but uh, God does the almighty through the least likely, doesn't he? And, and what happened was when Naomi started blessing Ruth, the Bible says when Ruth had her baby, Naomi took that baby and that old leathery wrinkled up woman, her breasts became filled with milk. And she, who was past childbearing age, started nursing a baby that she didn't even have because there was so much life in the person she blessed. That Naomi spent the rest of her life nursing Ruth's baby. If you bless somebody that God is blessing, God will give you a job nursing what they had. And the miracle is, when God puts you in that position, he'll give you milk when you wasn't even supposed to have none. He'll release blessings in your life that are mind-boggling. And people will look at you and say, what, what, what you doing nursing with your old self? And you tell them, if it had not been for the Lord, that was on my side I would have been swallowed up but look what the Lord has done <laughs> hey! remember it ain't fair it's just favor give me a second I'll be back after this there is an umbilical cord between provisions and purpose. God doesn't give you provisions just for your own personal gain. God has taken special care of you every step along the way. Ever wonder why? 
because favor ain't fair. Everything you've got, your talent, your charisma, God gave you those favors for his divine purpose. When you write us, visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. You will be given Favor Ain't Fair on three DVDs just for helping us reach others with your best gift. You can't be blessed and everybody just sit back and fold their arms. It ain't going to happen. It's going to be a whole lot. I don't believe it. But in spite of the chatter, if God has blessed you, And when your gift is $89 or more, you will also receive your own Psalms 90 tote bag, the Favor Ain't Fair journal set, and T.D. Jakes Classics Volume 5 DVD series, full of timeless wisdom. You are highly favored of the Lord. Isn't it time you walked in it? It's coming. The biggest family-friendly festival is back. MegaFest 2013. People are asking me, what is MegaFest all about? Is it a conference? Yes, it's a conference, but my God, it's so much more. I mean, it's festivity, it's fun, it's restaurants, it's shopping, it's people of God relaxing. We've been through the fire, we've been through the flood, we made it, it's time to celebrate. Bigger, better, grander than before. Three event-packed days for the whole family. All types of entertainment for your family, for your kids. We've got materials that men are going to need to cause you to stand up and be powerful, be the man that God has called you to be in manpower. The woman our loose, you already know, it's incredible. I want you to put your family in a spiritual environment and show them that it's fun to be a Christian. MegaFest 2013. Get your tickets now. Visit mega-fest.com or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. Throw a party in Texas. You know what? We do it big in Texas. I want to challenge those of you who've been frustrated because you're trying to stay on one level and God's trying to take you to another. He's just weaning you. He's just weaning you. He's just taking you off welfare. You don't need a handout. You need a hand up. God's going to do something awesome in you. And you will win if you don't quit. Listen, I've got to close right now, but before we do, I want to give a special shout out to all the fathers, all the dads, all the stepdads, all the spiritual fathers, all the mentors, who, all the mentees, all of us who have really been standing in the gap and making up the hedge and being there for our kids, spiritual or natural or adoptive, it doesn't even matter. As long as you stand as a man in the gap and do the best you can, you don't have to be a perfect man. You just have to be a focused man. Happy Father's Day to every last one of you. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Listen, dads, I'm excited to have an opportunity. We're going to be having manpower as a part of MegaFest. You ought to take some time off. It's Labor Day weekend. You're supposed to be off anyway. Chill out. Come on down and let us strengthen the man in you. God bless you. Happy Father's Day.